Hello, everyone. The, I'm making this video to share with you. My name is Alfred Cromwell. I'm the founder and president of City Tutoring from the beautiful city here of Lynchburg, Lynchburg, Virginia. This is a, I am sharing with you all today, a report about the level test that all, this is a, so this test that you see on your screens now is a level test that I give to, we give to all the pure mathematics. We have a course on pure mathematics, and this is actually a level test for students who uh, are interested in joining the pure mathematics course that we offer. We offer it on a semester basis, uh, sometimes a rolling basis. It, it really depends on how many students we have enrolled. Typically, our classes run from about 10 students minimum, and the maximum number of students is between 18 and 20. 20 would be the maximum because otherwise you lose that personal touch when you have such a large group of students. So one of the, what I'll be going over is the recent test that I gave out in the summer, summer of 2024. And I'm going to go through, there are two parts. So by the way, there are two parts in it. There is a part A, students are required to do all the questions in part A, I do not allow the use of calculators for these exams. And then they have a part B. In part B, they can choose from among a list of questions. Um, so, and they have a total of three hours in which to complete the, the examination. The examination, by the way, all examinations take place in person. That way we avoid using any of the resources and we make sure that you're, you're basically coming in as a blank slate. So I'm going to go through and tell you a little bit about how students did, in case you're interested in knowing a little bit about how pure mathematics, what it looks like. So this exam proved to be somewhat a little bit more demanding than the two previous ones that I had given out in June. This was given out in the middle of July. Uh, but there's no, I don't have any evidence to suggest that candidates found difficulty in completing any of the quota of questions especially ones in section B. The, however, the general standard, I'm seeing this year after year after year, the general standard of accuracy of working both algebraic and numerical is showing some decline. And it's showing more and more decline. So let's have a look at, for example, question one. Question one. This was, um, I don't know if you can see it well on the screen. It, it says expand the following. The expression is two plus parentheses, one plus one half X in the parentheses raised to the six exponent. In the, new, in the denominator, you have two plus three X. It says expand it in ascending powers of X up to and including the term in X squared. And this was very poorly done. In fact, many candidates assumed that, and I'll write it on, on the screen, they assumed that one half in the parentheses, so they did something like this. They assumed that this is the same as one half x squared. Now, my dear viewers, do you really think that this is the same, that these are the same things? They are not the same things. If you know your laws of exponents, and these are students who are getting into or who are interested in getting into pure mathematics. That's why we start from, from the foundations. Um, and so many of the candidates that were taking this test, they assumed that that equals that. And even more had no idea that what, so if you do one, over two plus three X. If we write it in this way, we could write it in a parentheses as well. So many of them, they had no idea that this can also be equal to one half times one plus And if you're writing it in this format, you could do 3x over 2 to the negative 1. A 
lot of students did not have an idea about that. And of those who, of those who attempted long division, some of some students attempted long division, more than half divided in descending powers of X. There was not a single candidate who sought to avoid the division by equating the numerator to the two plus three X times um, to A plus B X plus C X squared. You can always do that, but a lot of them did not do that. So that was question one. Now let's look at question two. So I'm gonna put a red mark over the ones that students did poorly on. Number two, it says the following are ordered brackets, bracketed integers as follows. And then I said, there being R integers in the Rth bracket, find simplified expression for the last integer, the first integer in the nth bracket. Um, so here, a lot of the candidates had no idea of how to, how to even approach this question. This only involved the, if you, the summation. You had to do one plus two plus three plus up until the end. By the way, this video is for students who are more advanced in mathematics. If, if you have not taken pure mathematics or you have not taken uh, a lot of the uh, more advanced courses, this is, none of this is going to make sense to you. But I'm assuming a, a general, I'm assuming a certain level if you click to watch this video. Um, the question number three, it says, find a real, find a set of real values of X for which the absolute value of X plus three is greater than two times the absolute value of X minus three. And in this case, many, a lot of the candidates seemed utterly unfamiliar with the modulus sign. Despite this inequality, it's, it's almost identical given to the one that I gave in the notes and the syllabus. I always give students a syllabus, by the way, of, of what topics you're going to be tested on before you come to city tutoring, by the way, for this course, for any course. But in this particular case, it was for pure mathematics. Uh, those who attempted, there were some students who attempted to square this, but we saw um, errors such as, for example, x plus three squared. So we had students do x plus three squared. And they told me that that was equal to X squared plus nine. Seriously. They told me that this was equal to X squared plus nine. So things like that uh, abounded. Um, question number four. This was a basic one. It says solve for X in the equation, cosine of two X plus the sine of X equals zero giving in radians in the form k times pi or k pi, all values of x lying between zero and two pi. This actually was well done. So I I'd, I'd had, uh, most students got this one. Number, number five was the imaginary numbers, complex numbers. So in this one, I would say most candidates knew how to manipulate complex numbers in algebraic form, but the standard of accuracy in actually in both parts was deplorable. Question number six, it says, prove that each of the circles, we have two circles here, x squared plus y squared minus four x equals zero, and x squared plus y squared minus 12 x minus eight y plus 43 equals zero lies completely outside the other. Um, this was generally well done using the coordinates of the centers and the sum of the radii. And those, there are some who adopted a purely algebraic approach where they solved the two equations were all unsuccessful actually in this case, as you have here a non-existence of real intersections. Uh, so that was really what only is necessary but not a sufficient condition for one for the one circle to lie completely outside the other. So I've got mixed feelings about this one. Number seven, this was if you've been uh, involved with parametric equations. Uh, so it says show that, I gave you uh, an example here, but it shows that the point five and negative eight lies on the curve 
I would say for this one, there was a lot of work of actually, I would say dubious integrity that was used in seeking to establish that the given point lay on the curve. Negative signs being introduced on an as, as required basis. A lot of students seemed really blissfully unaware that the tangent to the curve at five comma negative eight, it has to be an equation that is linear in X and Y and not involving the parameter T. So that was kind of what happened there. Number eight. These were just, um, actually came up twice. Well, this was number eight right here. So in that case, for question number eight, there are some who, if, if you observed that the sine of X, the derivative of that is D times the negative cosine of X, or if you used an equivalent substitution, if you use substitution here, you were generally successful. And the existence of the answer had clearly, in this case, prevented the appearance of many negative results. Those who attempted to use multiple angles were usually let down because they were very weak in their manipulation. So I would say 50-50 for this one. Uh, number nine, which says this one was talking about the derivative. What I noticed was a lot of the candidates had clearly never reached the last paragraph of the syllabus that I gave them. Because of the remainder, most solutions contained a correct relation between y and x. But there were actually many errors when, you, when, when they had to express y in terms of x. So this was part A of the level test, of the placement test, of the qualifying test, the qualification test. And I'm not happy with the results. Normally, what we do in those uh, situations like that is if, if we don't feel that you're ready to do pure mathematics, we put you in a lower level and you work yourself at city tutoring, you work yourself up from the bottom up. Well, we don't give trophies, uh, participation trophies. We just make sure that you are, that you're two things, that you're enjoying mathematics, of course. Mathematics should be enjoyable, but also that you're getting things right, that you're, that you have procedural fluency and also that you're, uh, you're confident when you're manipulating this. I don't have time to go over section B, but this was section A, all right? Uh, so I hope this uh, gives you an idea of what the pure mathematics exams look like at City Tutoring. Thank you for watching and we'll stay in touch for the next video.